Welcome to this episode of DIY3DTech.com. In this episode of Rapid Prototype Design, I'm going to show you how to build a low-profile screwdriver in Tinkercad using some of the custom shape features. So let's jump into it. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to go down here over here to Shape Generators, and we're going to select All. And once this comes up, what I'm going to do is I'm going to scroll down and I'm going to look for a specific shape generator uh, to meet my needs, which should be down here. And here we go. It's going to be a cog ring. And so I'm going to take this and bring this out onto my work plane. Now, this is set up for 12 by 12. And uh, you can see over here, we can change the, the uh, diameter of it. So I'm going to make this a little bit larger and just kind of pull it out until this is roughly about 20. Notice over here though I'm at 17.93 and I'm at 19 here. So a lot of times I think this is sort of the inner diameter of this. Uh, uh, however I want my outer diameter to be about 20 so I'm just going to go over here and I'm just going to make this 20 by 20 and then I'm pretty happy with that. Now it's about five millimeters high. Um, I am going to make this a little bit taller. I think I'm going to make it about six millimeters. And then what I'm going to do is now that I have this, I'm going to go back up here and I'm going to go back to my basic shapes. And then I'm going to, from my basic shapes, just bring in a cylinder and bring the cylinder in my work plane. And then I'm going to make the cylinder the same height of six millimeters and then I'm going to pull this over and I'm going to see how this fits in. Since it's 20 I'm going to probably have to knock it down in size a little bit so let's go down to 18 by 18 and we'll make this 18 by 18. We'll pull this in and this looks pretty good. So um, now the other piece I'm going to do is I want to take a look over here and I want to bring in a half sphere and I'm going to make this half sphere also uh, basically I'm going to make this 19 by 19 because I want it to overlap the base cylinder a little bit and then I'm going to squish this down I'm at 6 so I'm going to make this about 4 so I just want it a little bit of a bobble actually I'm going to make this 5 thinking about it and then what I want to do is I want to raise this up uh, as I recall, it was six over here, so I want to raise this up just thinking about it. So probably about 5.9 to leave a little overlap. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to try highlighting all these guys and use my favorite align tool and pull all these together into alignment. Yeah, it might take a little bit of computer power to get out make all this happen. Uh, and then I'm going to go ahead and deselect this. I want to pull this down a little bit more. So I'm 5.9. Let's try 5.5. I want to get the aesthetics down there. I'm still a little bit, I think, big because you notice that I'm overhanging my, um, my gnarlings or whatever you call them here. So I'm going to knock this down uh, to about 18 by 18, another millimeter. Sometimes you have to play with this a little bit to get the aesthetics the way you want it. Because mechanically, I think everything's pretty good. So that's still still infringing a little bit. So I'm going to knock this down to 17.5 and 17.5 and see if this does a little bit better. And then go ahead and realign everything. I wish there was a way you could just kind of select it and hit realign. Now I like that a little bit better. And so I'm about 10.5 overall and I want this to be actually 10. So I'm going to go ahead and select this. I'm going to make this join this. And then once this is joined and it's going to take a, maybe take a minute or two for the join because this is a complex object. All right. So I've got my join there, and I'm just kind of looking at this, and I'm just going to go ahead and flatten this out to 10, take a millimeter off. Now the next thing I need to do is I need to bring 
and let me see my um, I guess I use the polygon so I'm gonna bring the polygon over here set it down I want six sides because I'm gonna have a hex and then what I'm gonna do is um, kind of tilt this down and then now notice one of the things so I have a, a, a short side and I have a long side to the the polygon so I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna change this guy to 6.3 the short side and then the long side I'm going to make 7.2 actually I'm gonna change this to 6.4 I want to give myself a little bit of room and then what I want to do is I want to okay I think that's fine I was gonna shorten up the height but I, I'm, I'm gonna deal with it the way it is so now what I'm gonna do is put this in the center here and I want 8.2 millimeters to be sunk into the plastic so I have 10 millimeters to work with so I'm going to raise this 1.2 millimeters and then that should be good and then I'm going to do an align here just so everything's aligned and then select that and then go ahead and join all this stuff together and again take a moment or so because there's a lot of surface uh, on here especially because of the gnarling and then what I want to do is I want to change the color I don't like the blue to orange it makes uh, I find the orange makes things a little bit easier to see um, and I'm a little bit interested in this right here, the, uh, the way that this top uh, gnarling is with uh, this. I think it'll be fine. Well, we'll have to just print it out and see how it comes out. Uh, but the idea is we'll dro just drop uh, uh, one of those uh, you know hex screwdriver bits in here, and we'll have a low-profile screwdriver. So tell you what, I'm going to save this off. Let's head over to the printer and print it, and then we'll meet back at the bench and see how it turns out. Welcome back. So we printed it out. It took about seven minutes. It was a quick print and turned out really nice. And as you can see here, I've slid the bit in. Works great. And again, it's a nice low profile. I had a little task where I needed to get a small uh, bit in there and this served a purpose. And so again, very low profile. Uh, also, the, the gnarlings on the side work out great for gripping. And again, really happy with the overall design of this. Uh, you know, again, you're not going to do any major type work, but if you got a tight spot to get into like I had, uh, this was a simple way to do it. Instead of going to the hardware store trying to find something, I just designed it up on my own, printed it, and within 10 minutes I had a solution. And that's really the great thing about 3D printing is you can go from design, literally it only took me a couple minutes to design this, more so to make the video, and then seven minutes to print it out. So about 10 minutes again to a finished product, which I think is really cool. So hopefully you learned something. Um, and you're finding out a little bit more about the shape generators inside of Tinkercad. I love that feature of it. Uh, probably have not talked about it enough. So I'd like to hear from you guys. What's your favorite shape generator inside of Tinkercad? Uh, are you, would you be interested if I did uh, several episodes on creating shape generators? Rather interesting. It's done in JavaScript. Um, not that hard. Uh, JavaScript's not that hard in itself, but the way that uh, Tinkercad handles it, basically, these objects is SVGs. A little bit different, but not terrible. So anyways, let me know your thoughts. Let me know your favorite shape generator. Let me know what you're using shape generators for down below in the comments. And don't forget the swag shop up there. And hey, we'll catch you guys in the next video. Cheers. Please click like below and subscribe to the channel to keep up to date on all of our projects.